tremendous variety of signals here and also allows you to see how the, how the stand in a location where the buses and trains will, will interact. What we've got uh, up behind us here are four signals that the coaches that have been laying over after their break and are ready to leave, you can tell them that they will be ready to leave the, the staging area. The buses have a transponder on them that leads into the antenna that's right up above the line here that reads them into the system. If you go for them to go, they get their signal in the car. And the service that's on the uh, inbound track here will wait for us. We'll have to wait for them. If it's a train coming in, the train has to have a larger cushion of uh, protection in front of it because it's harder to stop a train. So the train will get a proceed signal, which is that uh, amber one up there is a stop right now. That will turn to a proceed indication, which is a, a vertical loader or vertical light signal. He go, when he goes into the station, the trains that are the buses that are here will have to stay put until that train has picked up its passengers and left the station. That's the separation that we talk about. Trains and buses cannot operate cannot uh, operate in the same direction in a station platform or in any tunnel segment throughout. So each tunnel. Each tunnel segment is what's called a signal block, and each station segment is a signal block. The train cannot occupy a, a block that has a bus in it, and the buses cannot occupy a block that has a train in it. That's the separation. It's a, it's a street running operation once they get into the International District Station going all the way out. So they're paying attention to, to the signals that are, on the, uh, that are mounted on the walls. Uh, the trains have them on one side, buses have them on the other side. And it's a signaling system, as Michael stated earlier, that keeps the, the separation between vehicles. So we do both of them, cannot occupy the same block. That's correct. It cannot it's occupy the same area at the same time. In the same direction. In the same direction. So in a station platform, you can have trains going one direction, buses going the other direction, but in the, t in the tunnel segments, they can't occupy the same block. Tunnel segments, the stations, or both? Do they block? Does the block go from here all the way to Pioneer Square Station, or is it just the state platform? The, the block barrier? is the station platform, then okay. the tunnel segment is, is, the next block? is the next block, and then the station platform is the next block, then the tunnel segment the next block, all the way through the tunnel that way. So what's that, uh, nine? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. Nine, nine blocks. Nine, there are nine signal blocks in each direction. What happens when the power goes out? The trains stop. The, train, <laughs> the trains run on overhead electric, uh, 1500 volts. They stop. Uh, if they're blocking a tunnel segment, we have a plan in place that would immediately keep the trains that are that are not in the tunnel would turn back uh, before they enter the tunnel and then we can establish a reverse operation around the train either in a station platform or in a block tunnel segment for the buses. Uh, if, you, if, a, if a train is stopped, that's the easiest thing for us to get around. If, a, if it's a bus that breaks down in a tunnel segment, that's where it gets interesting and we have contingency plans for dealing with that. Yeah, you can do that uh, in a station platform or you can use the opposing bore to run the trains in much like a construction flagging operation beyond these many projects you see around the area. So if you do that, your only switch is, is at the stub tunnel, right? Do you, you have, have a, the stub tunnel? You have, you, place, you, you have a place to, to switch the trains to a different track in the stub tunnel and outside just south of Royal Brome uh, at Stadium Station there's a uh, place where you can switch the trains from one track to the other. So you, so you tell the public to to migrate over to the to the other the other uh, side other platform. A, a system has actually been set up that uh, in the event that we have to stop operating trains over any segment of light rail line, a bus bridge would be placed in in place that the buses would have special signage that they would come in. The operators would make announcements that they are replacing the light rail, and they would operate to the nearest light rail station and drop the folks off at that location. Bus bridge, you mean? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, we would substitute buses, uh, the trains with buses on whatever segment of the line the trains aren't working. Like Amtrak does to Vancouver, BC. Yeah, on a much smaller scale. <laughs> <laughs> so they, just to clarify, we're talking about two different kinds of trains that are not occupying the same block. Does that mean uh, northbound and southbound? I mean, it's the same block. Anybody. It's the same block in the same direction. So on a station so platform, uh, when a train pulls in, at, at IDS, the bus has to 
wait until the train has left, and he'll wait at this red signal right here. If a bus is occupying the block, uh, then the train will wait at this signal until the bus is cleared out of the station platform. But you have somebody coming on the other side? The other In the station platforms, you can have somebody coming the other direction. Are we looking at uh, what reads the transponders here? Yes, these are, these uh, smart passes are re they read the transponders off the bus, and the transponder is located underneath the uh, wheelchair logo in the upper right hand corner of the bus. There. Even on a normal day, the buses stack up sometimes two or three deep. Uh, how do you how do you prevent that with trains, or, or will buses stack more often we, since they have less time to themselves in the platform bar? We the, you can actually have up to six buses in the platform at the same time. And so, and whereas it can be one train, the trains are running 10 minutes apart, so that's, uh, I haven't done the math, I think that's six trains an hour coming in, coming through in each direction. You can run 60, 60 buses, up to 60 buses an hour on this system each direction through, and so that allows, uh, a divided up uh, roughly 10 buses in between each train. Uh, in each train movement that that's, that's that far apart. Are, so, aren't trains going to run more often at peak times? They will run at seven and a half minute headways during the peak hours. And the system works with that. Every single test that we conducted, Michael uh, alluded to the successful tests that we did. Those were all peak hour tests where we ran up to seven and a half minute headway on the train or as, or as close to seven and a half minute headway. And the system works. So you have to change things like the, the bus size. Uh, uh, dwell times and following distances are those changing nope. from people used to. No, what what winds up happening is the 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 buses. If you have a train that goes in, the buses will group together into what's a, a, what you could almost call a platoon of buses that just naturally forms. And you can think of that in the, when those buses take off. You can think of that almost in the same way as being a six uh, a six car train. Then. What's the peak number of buses? Huh? What's the peak number of buses per hour? Sixty. Sixty. I think it, it, it runs like. It's a way that we can do People don't, people don't necessarily follow the, you know, people don't necessarily uh, help you do it that, that smoothly. You get wheelchair loadings, you get people having practices on the bus. You have, you have special ways to handle those situations when you've got, when the buses get really you, tight. You have a delay that occurs when that have. happens. If you, uh, if you have a difficulty loading a wheelchair on a bus, uh, traffic will stack up behind it, but that traffic does, uh, it just naturally clears itself out, even with a seven and a half minute headway. You can make adjustments for that. If you need to, you can hold the train back and run two trains uh, together, to run them through. You can make a decision to have each train on the stop and the train to the platform with one following right behind it. You can do the same thing with the bus. If the bus is coming in and hitting the city and dropping off, well, it could be routing with the circles, but it could be using that also if they're dropping off on the There is there is natural slack built into the system. There's less slack during rush hour, but it's still we we see the system recover when when you have problems.